Hello and welcome back Supermums. In today's video, we're gonna be discussing 10 inspirations to keep your home tidy. Okay, so I want to start with a disclaimer. If you've not looked at any of our stuff before or not been at our website, then you may not know how much we value that to be a super mom, you have to be the mom that you want to be. So, I am not in any way saying that to be a super mom, you have to have a tidy home. What I am saying is that if you want a tidy home, you want the benefits of a tidy home, here's some inspiration to do it, here's some advice to do it, here's some like strategies to do it. And that's the same with every theme every month. We are not saying that these themes have to be part of your life for you to be a super mom. But we wanted to find a way of bringing like say mum coaching out there for the skill set that, that some people do want to do. These seemed like common themes that most people were telling us were impacting them. And that's why we've started with these themes. If there's a theme that you would like us to look into, you'd like us to cover, or that you maybe feel like lots of mums would benefit from, then please whack it in the comments down below, pop onto our website and you can message us directly. That's probably the best option with something like this. But get in touch, give us a shout out. Don't sit there thinking that you're not super because you don't really care about having a tidy home or that one of the other themes hasn't been like something that is important to you. You might still wanna watch the videos because they might be useful to someone you know. You might wanna pass on the information or you just might wanna check if they're important to you. But don't feel like you're any less of a mum just because this doesn't matter to you. You are awesome as you are, being yourself. So let's be real, keeping things tidy is tough. It's so much easier once you've done things like declutter, but I just wanted to end the whole tidy month on these sort of 10 inspirational ideas. So when when it's getting tough, or maybe you're midway through your decluttering process and you're like, why am I doing this? That maybe this will spark that like burning sensation inside your soul to make you actually want to keep going and achieve your end dream goal. So number one, we touched on in our saving time month, which is that decluttering saves you time. Finding things. If you have decluttered and you only have the things that matter to you and you know where everything is, you find things so much quicker and then you have saved lots of time. You're also less stressed. So if you're looking for your keys and you find them straight away and you leave your house, not only have you left on time, but you leave so much calmer. Everything after that will be better. Whereas if you've like panic rush around now, you're late and you've got yourself into a tiz, even if you still leave in good time, you've got yourself into that tiz, your adrenaline's pumping, you're in like fight or flight stress mode. It's not good for you. It's not a good way to live. Number two is that mess and clutter have an effect on your mental state. I'm not gonna go into this too much because there is a lot of science-based research behind it which you can find all over the internet, but it's basically scientific fact that it's going to damage your mental state if you live in chaos and clutter all the time. It just, like, there's, there will be the odd crazy exception to the rule, like some crazy mad scientist that discovered like antibiotics or something through chaos and clutter. I can't remember the exact story. But on the whole, your mental state will massively benefit from this. If you are feeling particularly gloomy or down in the dance, you're having a tough time at the moment, this is a great thing to like, a positive great thing to pour your energy into. And you'll find like the mental benefits at the end are just brilliant. Number three is it helps you be the person you want to be. One of the big things I found while decluttering is I had lots of stuff that represented the person other people wanted me to be or the person that I thought other people wanted me to be. And getting rid of the things that didn't spark joy to me and didn't matter to me created this like, kind of like a shrine to myself or shrine to being myself. And I feel so much freer and lighter and, and like I've got this space to be me. And I have heard so many people say the same thing. It's not just me feeling this way but we become like this reflection of the things around us. So we need to be very protective of the things that we have around us. And that doesn't include clutter and other things that people have like inflicted on us. Number four is encourages better spending habits. 
I am so much more protective of what I bring into my, my world and my living space now. But it also means when I'm out and shopping, I'm not just buying stuff. I used to be like a, a sad shopper. Like when I was sad or feeling blue, I would go and shop. And now I have like other much more positive things to do when I hit those times. I still hit those times, but I do things like I'll have some yoga time or I'll have a smoothie or I'll do some baking and they're much more positive me things whereas before I would just go and spend money on things that I thought would make me feel better and I'd get like this moment of joy and then it would be gone and it would just be such a waste of money such a waste of space within my life and then I was constantly reminded about that sad time by all these bad things that I didn't really want number five is you will now know what you have so you won't buy duplicates. How many times have we gone through a cupboard and realized we have 27 sponges already, we do not need to buy the new one this morning? It's some level of insanity, but so many of us, even with really small homes, like I've lived in some tiny apartments and still ended up buying duplicates of things I didn't know I had. I used to like keeping little stockpiles of things. I now really hate that. I would much, unless it like massively saves me money, or massively reduces the amount of packaging I have to buy, I much prefer buying singles. If it's not gonna save me money or packaging, I'm buying it in a single. I'd, I'd rather go back to the shop at a later date and get the next one, because quite often that items that last a good couple of months, like a soap bar, will last me a good long time. I don't wanna buy a pack of four, I wanna buy one. I wanna buy the one that I need, not four. Number six is you start to realize what you really like. This sounds slightly crazy. I have spoken to a few people and they're like, what do you mean you don't know what you like? And when I talk them through my journey, they're like, I feel like I need to go and assess some things. I had like lots of clothes that on the hanger I liked, or I felt like they made me look good. So I kept them, but actually they weren't, they weren't me. Some of them maybe that they, I felt that they were a bit too young, or that they weren't really my vibe, or that they weren't appropriate for anywhere that I would want to go. So was I choosing to go places I didn't want to go just so I could wear these things that didn't really suit where I actually wanted to go? It was slightly crazy. It's not just about whether something looks good on you, or whether you like it on the hanger, or whether it's in style. It really needs to spark joy and be who you are. That's what's important. Number seven is calmness. Oh, calmness. I really struggled with the whole bringing my my office and my, my dressing room had to be amalgamated because the baby needed a room, surprisingly. Um, and we couldn't fit clothes in our bedroom. Uh, the storage in there is particularly bad, but it's built in, so there wasn't really anything we could do about it. So I had my clothes in a separate room and when the human arrived, they went into my office. And suddenly this space that was meant to be like my, my sort of calming, working, learning, growing space, which wasn't great to start with, was even more confuzzled. And it took a lot of work to declutter that down. It was one of my original reasons for needing to declutter. But I now have this much calmer space. I have much less stuff out. I have much less words everywhere shouting at me. Uh, much less stuff, even like pictures and things hung on the wall, there's much more white space and it's much calmer and I feel much calmer and I get much more work done. I don't think without a declutter Supermom Society would have ever been launched, like it's been that like calming and relaxing and I can come and do yoga in here without feeling like it's work stuff everywhere because my workspace is actually quite calm anyway. So that's really nice. So yeah, that's definitely had a massive impact. Number A, I'm pretty sure you're all gonna love, is you will spend less time cleaning. Now, big example of this is like having to lift everything up and to clean under it. If you've got less stuff out, you're gonna spend less time cleaning, less time with like dusting ornaments and stuff, that's gonna be quite a biggie too. But there will definitely be less time cleaning if you have less stuff to clean around. Number nine is there will be less waste in the world in general. If you have less stuff, less clutter, less likely of things getting broken, you're not gonna buy things that you don't like, don't want, don't need, have duplicates of in general. 
basically you will be removing less from your house in the long run if you only have the things that matter to you that spark joy that you find are beautiful that you find are useful you're going to create less weight that's less landfill we all know the world needs less landfill and number 10 a good declutter releases you from the past and allows you to move forward with your life i was holding on to things a lot of things from ex-boyfriends not because I was still like romantically attached to these people, but just because the item maybe wasn't broken or I quite liked the item, but I was never gonna use it because it has the memory of the ex that I didn't necessarily want to remember. And I sort of sucked it up and I got rid of all the stuff. Like <laughs> I felt cleansed, I felt clean. I feel like my relationship with my partner took like this on this whole new level I felt like I was able to like give myself more to him even though I wasn't like still in love with these people in any way shape or form but I don't know there was something about having those things that like really dragged me down and just presents from from people I wasn't in contact with anymore or people that I didn't really like anymore stuff like that it's it sounds crazy but it really was a massive release and I really feel like I've moved forward with my life having got rid of those things. As you've probably realised over this series of videos, uh, decluttering and tidying up my life mentally and physically has had such an impact on me. If there's been one thing that you've done in like the tidy decluttering process that's had a massive impact on you, I would love to hear about it in the comments down below and we can sing your praises and share your success as well. I look forward to connecting with you on this amazing journey through motherhood and remember that being a super mum is all about being the mum that you want to be. Remember, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications to never miss out on a video again.